Hello and welcome. We're on 1 Samuel chapter 18 today. We're picking up from the David versus Goliath battle from yesterday. Okay, verse 1. Now it came about when he had finished speaking to Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as himself. Saul took him that day and did not let him return to his father's house. Then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was on him and gave it to David, with his armor, including his sword and his bow and his belt. And I have a summary from Dr. John MacArthur here on uh, the situation we just read. It says, Jonathan willingly and subserviently relinquished the outer garments and instruments that signified his position as Prince of Israel and heir to the throne. Jonathan, a godly worshiper of Yahweh, quickly discerned that David was God's anointed and without reservation, offered the robe of succession to the true king of Israel. So David went out wherever Saul sent him and prospered, and Saul set him over the men of war. And it was pleasing in the sight of all the people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. It happened as they were coming, when David returned from killing the Philistine, that the women came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing, to meet King Saul, with tambourines, with joy, and with musical instruments. The women sang as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. Then Saul became very angry, for this saying displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed to David ten thousands, but to me they have ascribed thousands. Now what more can he have but the kingdom? Saul looked at David with suspicion from that day on. Uh, beginning of the end for Saul here. Verse 10. Now it came about on the next day that an evil spirit from God came mightily upon Saul, and he raved in the midst of the house while David was playing the harp with his hand, as usual, and a spear was in Saul's hand. Saul hurled the spear, for he thought, I will pin David to the wall. But David escaped from his presence twice. Now Saul was afraid of David, for the Lord was with him, but had departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from his presence, and appointed him as his commander of a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. David was prospering in all his ways, for the Lord was with him. When Saul saw that he was prospering greatly, he dreaded him. But all Israel and Judah loved David, and he went out and came in before them. Then Saul said to David, Here is my older daughter Merab. I will give her to you as a wife. Only be a valiant man for me and fight the Lord's battles. For Saul thought, My hand shall not be against him, but let the hand of the Philistines be against him. But David said to Saul, Who am I, and what is my life, or my father's family in Israel, that I should be the king's son-in-law? So it came about at the time when Merab, Saul's daughter, should have been given to David, that she was given to Adriel, the Maholathite, for a wife. Now Michael, Saul's daughter, loved David. When they, when they told Saul, the thing was agreeable to him. Saul thought, I will give her to him that she may become a snare to him, and that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. Therefore Saul said to David, For a second time you have become my son-in-law today. Lucky guy. Verse 22. Then Saul commanded his servants, Speak to David secretly, saying, Behold, the king delights in you, and all his servants love you. Now therefore become the king's son-in-law. He loves you so much that he wants to spare you to death. Verse 23. So Saul's servants spoke these words to David, but David said, Is it trivial in your sight to become the king's son-in-law, since I am a poor man and lightly esteemed? The lineage of the king was super important, so David didn't feel worthy with his upbringing and his background. Verse 24. The servants of Saul reported to him according to these words which David spoke. Saul then said, Thus she shall say to David, The king does not desire any dowry except a hundred foreskins of the Philistines, to take vengeance on the king's enemies. Now Saul planned to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines. When his servants told David these words, it pleased David to become the king's son-in-law. Before the days had expired, David rose up and went, he and his men, and struck down two hundred men among the Philistines. Then David brought their foreskins, and they gave them in full number to the king, that he might become the king's son-in-law. So here's your wedding gift, Saul. So Saul gave him Michael, his daughter, for a wife. When Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David, and that Michael, Saul's daughter, loved him, 
Then Saul was even more afraid of David. Thus Saul was David's enemy continually. Then the commanders of the Philistines went out to battle, and it happened as often as they went out that David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so his name was highly esteemed. Well, it's happening, Saul. You better get used to it, because uh, the throne of David is on its way. All right, guys, hope you can join me to uh, find out more. There's going to be a lot of exciting events coming up, and hope you can join me. Take care, and God bless you.